Hello, uh, my name is William Madudike and I am from Zimbabwe. I'm an agricultural engineer, a farmer. Uh, I do potato production and I'm also the national uh, youth chairperson of Zimbabwe Farmers Union, as well as Southern African Confederation of Agricultural Unions. Hi, I'm Ivy Atieno from Busia County, Kenya. I'm the owner of uh, Glyke Agribusiness Enterprise. It's a farm that grows uh, indigenous African vegetables. And uh, I'm an agriculture economist by profession and uh, also the local representative for YPAN. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to be discussing about uh, the difficult moments that we have first in our businesses, maybe in our lives. So uh, I would love to start uh, by sharing mine. Yeah. So uh, in, in our journey, um, one of the most important things that I have realized has been to own land uh, or to have access to land. And uh, with uh, three of my friends in um, Zimbabwe, we started our farming journey in 2019, uh, just out of, after finishing our uh, uh, postgraduate program together in agribusiness and leadership. And uh, three years down the line, we received uh, um, uh, contracts uh, from one of the companies um, where we were getting our seed for production of seed potato. And four weeks down the line, we, uh, we noticed that there was no germination of this particular uh, uh, variety that we had gotten. And we lost all of the investment that we had put in the ground and we're left with debt. And um, that was the lowest point in our lives because we had put all our cards on this particular project. And we sat down and uh, we, we, we decided to talk to the contractor to advance us more seed and more inputs for us to get back into production, pay back that debt and sustain our business. I'm happy that after a year, we have something and we have covered much of the debt and we are progressing well in, uh, in, our, uh, in, in that particular business. My journey has been quite a journey. I actually didn't start with the African leafy vegetables. I've had a passion about farming all through. But it has been a journey. I started with tomatoes and uh, I'm coming from a county that is a border. It's a border town. So we are having challenges of uh, agricultural products moving from one region, from Uganda, moving to Kenya. And I used to produce in a greenhouse. And, you know, producing something in a greenhouse is expensive compared to somebody who is uh, planting outside. So it was quite a challenge in pricing. So for you, you want to sell like three tomatoes for 20 shillings, for 20 Kenyan shillings, and somebody selling like five or 10. So it was, that one didn't work. I tried uh, cucumber. Then cucumber, my local market could not handle it. Most of them didn't know about it. So I had to move it from uh, Busia to Kisumu, which is around 250 kilometers away. And uh, still there was competition because cucumbers were coming from other markets and all. So I had to think about a product that uh, I'll be able to sell in my market. And whatever the competition is, I'm able to sustain it as a business. Mm -hmm. So that's why when I decided to venture in uh, the African leafy vegetables. Yeah. Yeah, because it's something that is consumed locally and everybody will consume it. So it doesn't matter. It is not selective. It doesn't matter who else is producing it. You yes. still get market for it. So that's how I ended up producing African leafy vegetables. Wow, that's, a, that's an inspiring story. Yeah. You know, I, I want to know more about the African indigenous vegetables that you do and whether there is a good market for it because i know in my country they are they are really produced at uh by farmers they yes. natural naturally grow so normally they don't make good business uh so tell me more i produce spider plant then uh, ethiopian kale 
Then we have uh, Managu. Do you know Managu? No. Okay, now I really don't know the English name. About it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then uh, we have uh, we have Miro. Those are our local names. Probably okay. I don't know the scientific names. Yes. But uh, yeah, those ones are vegetables that are locally consumed. So it's easy to get market. All right. But uh, also I have other vegetables like the eggplant, okay. spinach. Mm -hmm. But those ones I did I don't produce them in large scale. Okay. I specifically produce in large scale African leafy vegetables and mark you they are organic. We don't use pesticides and we don't use fertilizers. Oh wow. Yeah. That's quite an interesting thing. And I, I think it's something that we can also I try to implement in Zimbabwe because we normally use um, exotic kind of vegetables like your rapeseed. Um, yeah, of course, a bit of spinach, um, but that has become uh, part of our normal vegetables for our meals. Um, but we are trying to promote some of these uh, particular crops so that uh, people use them because they are quite healthy yes. uh, yeah. and uh, easy. they are re resilient to climate change. Yeah because they can do well even in very uh, um, uh, hot conditions or dry conditions. And there are crops that are ours. There are crops that are African. Oh, yeah. So they'll cope with the African climate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and some of the challenges that uh, we face in Zimbabwe, like I said earlier on, um, uh, to do with the, uh, access to land, and that has brought some of the uh, difficulties in, our, in my journey uh, farming. Because in the past four years, like, we have had to move more, more than three times uh, from one place to the other because we are renting this land. And um, sometimes when you do well, the owners now want to take over the project or now want to use their own land because they believe uh, they can use it too. So we have had to restart many or several times. Um, and um, it, that has taken a big toll on our business. And as a young farmer leader within a union, this is one of the things that I'm passionate about and that I'm advocating for with our government to create policies that are favorable to young people. And, and what drives me is, is that I've experienced these things and I want other young people to go, to, to go over these challenges um, uh, through the lobby and the advocacy that we do with our union. Actually, access to land, uh, I think it's a challenge that is all over. Because even as we don't have a land literally per se, you have to live. And the problem is, Kenya, somebody will lease out land that is not productive. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when you make it productive, as you start producing, they change their mind. They want their land back. Because it was not productive, you made it productive. Now they want it to use it on their own. Mm. Yes, and uh, actually that has been a big challenge on my side. That is why uh, after some time, uh, we had an, an agreement and a negotiation with my parents. Then mm -hmm. we, had, uh, we purchased some greenhouses. So that helps us on the land issue. So we can produce from there. But also now that I was also venturing in uh, African leafy vegetables, and you're also venturing in a crop that is highly perishable yes so that is also another big challenge and it's it was one of our big challenge because you produce vegetables but vegetables won't stay a week or two it's just three days or four days and it's gone bad yes so we had yes. outside the box mm -hmm. how can we solve this because you don't keep changing ventures yes and then there's an idea of uh, solar drying them. Yes, that yes. To our minds. Yes. So we partially we have partially started to solar dry them, but it's not in large scale. But we are doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a solution to the most harvest losses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, this is this is something that we could also uh, uh try try out in and in Zimbabwe. A, a lot of the challenges that you are sharing with me, uh, uh I'm realizing that. They are quite similar to our yeah. experiences. And I, and I believe that as young people, what we need is to ensure that we we work with associations or we form the associations that enable us to uh, come together and create the evidence to the challenges that we're having so that when we are speaking to policymakers, we are coming from a position of facts and uh, evidence of what is happening on the ground. And we advocate and we push for the agenda that we know serves us as young people. 
because if we do not do that, um, our issues may never be uh, represented or addressed. And I also believe it's time as young people to also take up the higher position in, uh, in the political space uh, so that we can effect the change that we believe in. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy that I'm part of um, this movement and I would love to, at some point, take it to the point where we can really make the decisions. Yeah, and uh, it's also important that uh, people in agriculture mm -hmm. are uh, up to date with the advanced technologies. Yeah. You know, we are losing out because we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You see, you're used to you're there with the goods, you don't know what you need to do. Yes. I think we really need to look for ways. You can, uh, you produce in large scale, then you, do, you end up not having market. Yes. But I'm thinking we should look for ways that we can start valuing value adding value to our product mm -hmm. so we just don't focus on production we can uh, you can uh, reduce the level of production and uh so that you can also focus on value addition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because most of the challenges we are facing is because of production yes production without markets yes probably you had uh, you had in mind uh, i was going to sell to like this market mm -hmm. And uh, in three months' time, the market has changed. Yes. What is your plan B? Yeah. So we really need to, to take value addition as our plan B. Yeah. So you produce, but uh, when you take, you have a target market, yes, mm -hmm. but you also have a plan B. What yeah. is your plan B? For you, like for me, my plan B will be, I'll get market for fresh producers. Yes, well and good. If I don't get, I'll solar dry them or I'll boil them, freeze them, and sell to anybody who is ready to buy them yep. at that time. Yes. For you, you can produce and uh, think of a way. If I can't get market for the potatoes immediately, mm -hmm. I can do crips because crips will do what will stay for, yeah, long. for longer. So yes. To have that in mind where we produce and we have a market. Yes. That's Plan B. If you don't get the market you had in mind, what else do I do? I don't end up losing my investment. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So I think we really need to think around value addition. Think around production and value addition. So when I produce, I have a market. If I don't have a market, I'll add value myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that speaks to 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 uh, our resilience as young people in the midst of uh, difficult situations. Yeah. You know, because the, these challenges are the ones that motivate us to look for solutions. Yes. And sometimes the solutions we find for little challenges at the farm are solutions that could end up impacting the whole industry. Yeah. So I believe that we should uh, embrace the challenges and the difficulties we have because from them we learn things that we are able to apply in our personal lives and apply in our businesses, but also there is an opportunity that we could actually take these things and change the whole industry. Uh, and in the process, when we address these difficulties, we might actually sit on a million dollar uh, uh, idea or business uh, because some of these challenges, like I said, or like we agreed, are similar everywhere. Yeah. So a, a post-harvest solution that you're coming up with could be a solution that uh, impacts the whole of Africa. Yeah. And and um, so we should embrace uh, these challenges. We could be sitting on a million dollars yeah. uh, by yes. just looking at those challenges. Yeah, you see those challenges, we make agriculture lucrative. Yes. The way we overcome our challenges is the way that attracts people to the industry. Yes. You see, when you have the challenge, it comes, you, you get discouraged, you fail, mm -hmm. then no one wants to come to an industry where people are failing. But you get the challenge, you overcome it, you get a solution that is attractive. Mm -hmm. You attract more people, more young people to the industry. In the industry, in the industry. Yeah, because yeah, this this is some of the things that we are faced with. How do we overcome these challenges? Because the whole of the next generation of young people is looking at how we're going to address these challenges, yeah. lest they be discouraged forever to join this industry. And we need to know that when we are dealing with these difficulties in our businesses, um, uh, like you say, more people are looking up to us. And when we address this, it means the next generation is not going to have to face the same challenges. And that's how our progress is made. I can think of how railroads were made in, in America. I mean, I think it could be difficulties in moving goods from one place to the other. And they had to, 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 to uh, go through excruciating pain 
to develop the railroads across America uh, to move goods at that particular point. But today, with those railroads, staff is able to move through and across America, and that challenge is no longer there. They are now looking into even futuristic uh, solutions for challenges that they are facing today because the, the previous generation had a solution to some of their challenges. Yeah, so I think we really need to think. We have, agriculture has a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. It comes, and then it's one industry that you overcome this one today, another one pops up. Yeah, yeah, yes. You overcome this one, simply something else will come up. Yes. But I really think it's a, it's an industry that when you put your mind, your passion, you can really do a lot in it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's agriculture is wider. Yeah. And the agriculture is the only, I think it's the only business that gives you open more opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's true. Open industry. Yes. So if it you can do use the same business to do multiple things. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's true. So this one fails, you can choose something else and do. So I think it is it's one uh, area will encourage people to do it because of course we'll tell them it's not like it's a it's an easy road it's a mm -hmm. walk in the park yep. but also the challenges come you are able to definitely to definitely you are speaking of challenges uh on in the daily life of a farmer i mean every every morning we wake up there's something uh and uh you have to sort it out you have to have uh, the the character to deal with challenges every day and um, at some point, I almost uh, I felt discouraged uh, because, you know, the pump, um, there is a fault with the pump or is electricity or is that it's not raining or is that the, it's heat wave and the chickens are about to die or it is that the tractor itself it needs a repair. There's always something that is seeking to be addressed in, and we need to draw strength from within our, ourselves to face those challenges every day. But also, I believe as young people, we need to create the societies around us or communities around us that allow us to share about these challenges that we face so that we see how other people are solving those problems. Because the challenges we face, we are not the only ones in these challenges. There are many others. And sharing these challenges with everybody help us to know that we are not alone and to draw strength from outside ourselves. And yeah. that way we are not weary when more challenges come. Agriculture is really a funny thing. May I have an example of the other day I had planted a few capsicum. I come from a region where it's very hot. Yeah. So you imagine one morning you wake up and your capsicum has lost. Yeah. In a hot region and you look at them and you're like, really? Seriously? Yes. In a hot region. Yes. Expect it to have something else you know, definitely yes yes expected in cold that region yes so you wake up and you're like oh. but you don't get discouraged you look for a solution for it mm -hmm. yeah that's that's it and you and 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 you said it very right uh climate is one of the big issues that we are having to deal with and every season now there is a difficulty or a difficult moment that comes because of climate change yeah uh, we have seen that we have grown some tomatoes at some point and our potatoes and most of them rot because there was water logging conditions within, uh, in that particular area. And we lost quite a lot, especially on the tomatoes, we lost quite a lot. And so we have to be prepared and we have to be resilient as, as, as the new generation of farmers. Because these difficulties, because of the variability of climate change, we are going to have them for a while. And that speaks to us being proactive about mitigating climate change. How do we farm better such that we do not contribute to more carbon emissions that will, in, in, as a result, contribute to global warming and all the challenges that we are having. And it's so, it's so, it's so nice that at the moment we're discussing this, there's COP28 happening where these challenges are being discussed. And I hope our leaders are doing something towards addressing these things. Uh, as well. And uh, uh, another point about overcoming our challenge, I think we need to be flexible because like right now, if you, you're a farmer depending on um, the rains, mm -hmm. like this year for us, Kenya, the, the, the seasons have been unpredictable. Okay. Because we've 
we don't have rains up to December. Mm -hmm. but now we've had rain. So as a farmer, you need to think outside the box. Okay. How can I utilize this? It's a challenge here as it has come. Mm -hmm. but how will I utilize it? Yes. Yeah. So you can plant short crops, like I was thinking, you can do short crops. You see, so mm -hmm. to take the challenge and it's like, okay, I know this, my season runs from this to this, this to this. Yes. So it yes. To be flexible. If it changes, then what do I do? Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. What do I do? The seasons have changed. Probably you wanted to plant maize. You can't plant maize. Yes. Your maize was supposed to be harvested in December, but yes. it's raining. So it has taken long for it to for it to be ready. So mm -hmm. what do you do? What is the plan? Be yep. active. So for me, I think overcoming our challenges, we really need to have a plan B as a farmer. Yeah. And it's not a plan B for another business. It's a plan B for your farm. Yeah. A plan B for what you're producing. Isn't yes. It? If this is not working, I should not sit down and complain. I should look for something else to do. If I planted capsicum, it's not working. What if I plant cow mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and yes. we should also, I think, and uh, something else when it comes to production, I would encourage most farmers to intercrop. Don't measure on one crop because mm -hmm. measuring on one crop, if it fails, you're done. Yes. But if you have two crops, definitely one will fail and one will be able yep. to pick up. So yes. That's some ways of overcoming the challenges that come with production. Yes. Yeah. And I've, I've had to learn that we have to diversify. Um, like you said, because if you put your eggs in one basket, it's always um, inevitable that you are going to be um, having those eggs destroyed at some point. So uh, one of the ways to, that I've seen to work in dealing with challenges is to say, diversify your enterprises. If you are having tomato and potatoes, they're almost the same family. They are affected by one disease, all of which you lose it out. Yeah, if they are affected by the rains, you lose it out. But if you have animal husbandry happening somewhere, it could be cattle, it could be goats, you have something to hedge your business on yeah. when things do not happen the way you want. Yeah. And, and, and so diversification is one of the way to prepare for the difficult moments as we are speaking about. And uh, I hope that we emerge stronger as young people and we learn to diversify our enterprises, crop, um, livestock. There's also agritourism coming, yeah. right? How do we utilize the spaces where we farm in such a way that we are, we, we bring people together uh, uh, or to to enjoy the farm environment, to see what we are doing, and to also market the rural areas because yeah. the more the people come into our rural areas, uh, the more money that comes to it because people realize, oh, I need a drink, I need uh, some food. They buy from the rural areas, and when you stimulate that rural in, uh, economy, then it means that the businesses that we run in those rural areas will also thrive. And uh, so in agritourism is one of those things. Yeah, and we, grow, and we also need consistency. Mm -hmm. You see, you cannot, uh, agriculture needs consistency. You mm -hmm. can't survive as a young person in agriculture if you're not consistent. If, yes. Even for the markets, for every, for the markets, you will need to be consistent yes. to be able to maintain you yourself as a farmer. Yes. So I think most of the challenges that uh, have come, we need to have a plan B. We need to become consistent in what we're doing. And uh, I think that way we'll get, yeah. So what 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 would be that thing that um, you see our farming uh, or our agriculture becoming, let's say, 20, 20 10, 20 years from now, if we were to meet again and say, Gloria, um, this this is it. What is it that you see farming to become in, in uh, 20 years in Africa? Yeah, in terms of my business or in terms of... It could be your business or it could be agriculture in general. Yeah, I really think, I really think agriculture is uh, the next... Uh, sector of employment that is really growing yeah and uh one thing that has interested me is that youths are interested in farming and you see agriculture is a uh, is one is one uh, sector that when you get the passion and the key to it mm -hmm. you'll struggle a bit the first five uh six years mm -hmm. but it's one sector that when you click it 
it's close. Yes. So for me, I think uh, when we are consistent, we maintain, we keep being consistent, then we'll pull it through. And yeah. I think it will become the next, uh, the next employer, the next big industry that offers employment. And you'd see agriculture, and why I'm saying that because it covers a wide range. Mm -hmm. See, most of the economic, most of the other econo economic departments depend on it. Yeah, that's true. When uh, people venture into agriculture on a serious note, mm -hmm. then there will be change in our continent. Yes. Because the, the, what is the hospitality industry depends on agriculture. Yeah. Most of the industry, because most manufacturing of them, and all, manufacturing, they all get the raw materials. Yes. So, and it's an industry that supplies the other industry, but it's an industry that is less. It's a uh, let's say it's less privileged mm -hmm. because no one wants to be in it. In it, yes. People come to it, then there is a possibility of the other industries growing. Yes. It's the it's the source. It's the root. Yes. See, when the root the root is well taken care of. Then the stems and the leaves and the fruits develop oh, well. So yeah. if you don't take care of the roots, then the tree won't develop well. Yes. So if we put more emphasis on agriculture, then we have a big tree. Yes. Where means African economy will grow. Yes. yes. That's true. So I think when effort is put in agriculture, then 20 years to come, Africa will be the next tree, the next US. Yes. Yes. And you've actually touched on the uh, where where my dream for 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 agriculture in Africa is, um, I, I hope that we will create a more profitable uh, industry within agriculture. We have so many places to learn how agriculture can be developed, or things that have gone wrong in the West, in Europe, and in the US. And if we really look into these things, we can, as we are developing agriculture, begin to see which ways or which pathways we can use to use agriculture to take people out of poverty yeah. because agriculture is that capacity to enable many people to come out of poverty yeah. because there's so many people at the moment that are employed within the agriculture sector. And when we do it so well, as you say, we unlock value within other industrial sectors. Uh, the people that do clothes, they are waiting on the cotton that the farmers produce the people that uh, process meat are waiting for the farmers to produce the meat itself. There are several things that are made from corn or maize yeah. that we are consuming every day. So everybody is waiting on agriculture. If we can do it well and if we can make it profitable, not only do we employ more people, but we give them decent employment within the agriculture sector. Not only do we do that, but we enable other industries to blossom and create better value and better jobs and agriculture should be right there as a cornerstone for African development. Yeah. And the young people are the missing link that we need to encourage. Yeah. So I said earlier on, for them to get into agriculture now, they need to have the promise, and the promise is the opportunity. What are the opportunities there? It's not just the farming, but we are farming to, lead, to live out of farming. Yeah. Many old people get into farming as a retirement solution or package. But when us as young people get into this, we want to build a career. Yeah. And when we want to build a career, we need that opportunity, that economic opportunity to be highlighted. And that is the dream I have. And that is what fuels my passion for the work I do as a farmer and also as a farmer union leader. Yes. Yeah, and I think we really need to assure the African youth that there is a lot of opportunity and potential yeah. in agriculture. And agriculture doesn't mean you carry your jembe in the morning and go to farm. Yes. Agriculture means a lot of things. Yes. They should try their best to explore that sector. Yeah. Because it has opportunities and it can help you grow. So in conclusion, I will say um, this has been an interesting conversation with you. And um, uh, I came with the Lord on my shoulders that the difficult moment I had, but I came out inspired. Yeah. The many ways in which we can convert these difficulties into something meaningful and maybe create opportunities out of the challenges we have solved.